studio now is Chris Bishop, Managing Editor of Forbes Africa. Chris, I believe you've got some interesting stories for us today. Okay. Talking about money, I know money Mayweather is amongst the, <laughs> amongst the stories. But firstly, I'm going to release who we've got on the cover of April. And the person is the richest man in Africa, Aliko Dangote. Mm. Now, there's been a lot of talk over the last week about who should be on the cover, who shouldn't be on the cover. This is a Forbes Africa cover, a story of power, stature, success, a well-known face, a genuine entrepreneur, and also a man with a story to tell. I mean, a lot of people who want to be on the cover maybe can't rustle up a few uh, million dollars. This man tells us the story how he lost $10 billion. Now, I can't think of anybody <laughs> who doesn't want to read that story right now. And also, with what's happening in Nigeria exactly. overnight, it's very topical very, very that topical. Uh, their arch entrepreneur is part of a great cover story, which I think is going to sell pretty well. Um, the billionaires list is another one yes. we've got. Um, everyone looks out for this every year. Mm -hmm. It gets bigger every year. This is the 29th year that Forbes have done it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's quite uh, fascinating in the so fact this that... this is the global billionaires list. The global billionaires list. Well, it's quite um, nicely laid out, as you'll see. Um, essentially, uh, we've divided it into continents and countries. Okay. And from an African perspective, there's a lot of the people haven't changed since last year. But there's one or two new additions, like Mohamed Duji, uh, a man we had on the cover a couple of years ago. He's a new billionaire with 1.3 billion. He took the family manufacturing business and um, commodities business in Tanzania. And he came in. Also, a guy called Rostam Azizi. He's a new billionaire, also from Tanzania. One thing that uh, I quite like about this year's list is the fact that some of the people from off the beaten track mm -hmm. of African business are up there in the billionaires list. That's, that's uh, quite cool. And we, plus, this month, we've gone heavily on 35 years of Zimbabwe. Oh, yes. On April the 17th. Mm -hmm. April the 18th is actually Independence Day, 1980. Zimbabwe was born. And uh, on that night, Bob Marley, the famous reggae musician, he played live for two nights in a row at a free concert at Rufaro Stadium in Harare. Great story. It would never happen today. The man, they flew to Jamaica, some Zimbabweans. They asked him to come and perform. They said they had no money because, I mean, it was a new country. So he said he'll pay his own way. He paid his own way for 37 musicians. Went there. He got tear gassed on the night because there was a huge, tremendous uh, crowd. And one of the questions I put out on Twitter yesterday was, uh, what did he actually say? when he got tear gassed. <laughs> and there's a quote in there, I won't spoil You're it for you. Say, oh, You'll have to read the magazine. Okay. <laughs> but, um, and uh, it was a fantastic, and we found, we got eyewitness accounts from people who were there, including a couple uh, who was their first date in 1980. And 35 years later, they're still married with three children. And we got pictures of the two of them together. It's a, it's a lovely little piece. So, but also, we had a heavy look at the economy as well, what's happening. We had uh, some of the top economists commenting. But uh, last but not least, Floyd Mayweather. I was about, I'm not one for sports. I'm not sure if you are, <laughs> Money Byron. Uh, yeah. I've seen one boxing match ever in my life. Everyone's talking about so it. Even people are not interested in boxing. Oh. But the one thing I liked about this story was that we, we made it our own. We turned it into an African story. And the fact we found uh, a man called Lefanolo, uh, Hands of Stone, Ledwaba. Now, it's a great story because this guy was a world champion. He's from Soweto. He's a world champion. And uh, he went to Las Vegas to fight and defend his world title. So his opponent got cut and couldn't fight. So they had to rustle up somebody from somewhere. And they said, look, we've got this nobody from the Philippines. You'll clean him up in 10 minutes. Don't worry. We'll show you the video the day before. Unfortunately for him, the guy's name was Manny Pacquiao. So this young, scrawny guy, I've seen pictures of the fight. He looks more like a boy band. He's got like orange hair right here. And he cleaned him up. Really? And absolutely hammer the guy out of sight. And how unlucky can you That's be defending story. your yeah. world title and some nobody pitches up. And also we've got the story of Philip Ndo, yeah. who's from Toondo in the north of the country. Now he fought um, Floyd Mayweather, the only African to do so. And his coach told him that this guy's a coward. If you hit him a couple of times, he'll run. But unfortunately, he knocked him out in the ninth round. And the rest is history, 47 fights. Defeat. Undefeated, eh? well, yeah. well, Chris, that really is a great addition. And I understand why everybody wants to be on the cover of <laughs> Forbes exactly. Africa. That was Chris Bishop. He's the managing editor of Forbes Africa.